In this segment of Sportsman TV, Greg Hackney is fishing boat docks for largemouth bass. Hackney knows that boat docks provide an ideal habitat for fish. Boat docks are a thing that any bass fisherman has to learn to fish. And Hackney has some great tips on how to reap the rewards. Uh, well, you know, they give the fish a lot of cover, shade. The other cool thing about boat docks, like especially on these lakes, are that they give the fish a lot of option depth-wise. You know, some of these docks on this lake, you know, they start in two foot, they go out to 15. So the fish can start on one end and move back and forth. You know, they never have to leave the boat dock. Boat docks are something that everybody's got to get used to fishing because they're here to stay and there are more boat docks now on lakes than ever before. I mean, I can remember even fishing the lake that we're on right now when it had a few boat docks, but not many. And so boat docks are a thing that, you know, every, a bass fisherman has to has to get a, get to like them. They're a little more trouble. Just just say that all the fish are shallow on the dock. Well, then you fish that part of it, and then you got to go all the way around to get to that part of the. And it's sometimes it's a little time consuming, but very rewarding. You basically fish boat docks with the same lures you would fish other stuff with. It's just each day varies. The swim jig perfect right now. You know these fish are up chasing bait, so I want something that it's staying up in the water column right now. You know, and there'll be other days when they're down on the bottom and you know, a jig, a tube, a, a rodent. You know, in the summertime, especially on some of these deep docks, I like a deep diving crankbait, like a Series 5 or a 5XD, a big worm like an anaconda, you know, in the, hot, the hottest part of the year. The same boat dock that's good in the fall can also be good in the spring or in the dead of the summer. But typically, it's just the way the fish is relating to it is different. Like I said, there'll be days when the fish are in the, on the two foot end and there'll be other days that they're only two foot deep, but they're out on the very deepest end of the boat dock because that's where the shad are coming by and they're just using the, setting up on the boat dock, you know, ambushing. Uh, well, you know, basically I'm just targeting underneath the dock, around the uh, pilings. You know, this particular lake where the water doesn't fluctuate much, you know, most of the time boat docks will be piers, you know, and have, uh, you know, either metal or wood pilings in the water. And so, uh, you know, I'm just fishing over the cross members. And, uh, you know, one thing about swimming a jig, you can fish at a pretty high rate of speed. You know, I'm not swimming the jig down deep. I'm keeping it in sight. And uh, I'm really just making, you know, um, short pinpoint casting, you know, and I get in the right situation, I can skip that jig under there or I'm pitching it under there, whatever, whatever it takes to get it under there. And the main thing I do when I'm swimming a jig is that when that jig hits the water, you want it moving. You don't let it sink any, you know, if that makes sense. You, like the instant it stops and it gets where you want it, you immediately want it. And a lot of times what'll happen in that situation, you can get a reaction bite that way. Buoy Outfitters is your one-stop shop for all types of outdoor cooking. Tailgating? We've got Bayou Classic Barbecue Pits and King Cooker Jambalaya Pots. If frying's your favorite, check out r &B Works Cajun Fryers and Cajun Injector Products to keep meat moist and flavorful. Black iron skillets are key in a southern kitchen, and Buoy carries a big selection of lodge cast iron, plus Bayou Classic Pots for your next crawfish boil. Come to Buoy Outfitters and let us get you cooking. Buoy Outfitters, everything outdoors. It's at 4 a.m., driven by an overwhelming passion. We're driven by the beasts that roam the waters of this great country. We don't think about stress or bills or Monday. We're fishermen, always ready. And as for the gear we hold, trust is everything. Never again should you sacrifice strength for style. The Team Lose Pro TI Speed Spool. Built for anything you set the hook on. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. As sportsmen, we seek out the very best craftsmanship in many aspects of what we do. We take great pride in the work we put in because we want the very best results possible. Those same philosophies are how we do things at Smith Shanklin Sosa Law Firm. We craft each case to the individual needs of our client, and we take pride in our work to protect your rights. To schedule a free consultation, 
just give us a call at 225-223-6333. Now, this is just a quarter ounce Hack Attack Heavy Cover Swim Jig. This one looks pretty rough because it's been pretty beat up. You know, rod choice for me, uh, this is my 7.2 swim jig rod. It's a little bit shorter, but you know, when I'm skipping them boat docks, I like a rod that I can roll cast. You know, because the deal when I'm swimming a jig is mostly a casting deal. It's not like I'm, you know, plinking and pitching to targets. You know, I'm skipping that jig under those limbs, under back up under those boat docks, and I like that little bit of shorter rod with a shorter handle allows me to make those casts. Uh, this is a Luz Custom Pro, again, 50 pound gamma braid and a high speed reel, it's an eight three to one. Now, a lot of times when I'm swimming a jig like that, sometimes it's on the reel. Like a lot of times when I get out in open water, I'll just steady retrieve. But when I'm around the, that cover, I like to shake that jig. And I'm basically using the rod and, and I got it coming forward. I'm using the reel to pick up the slack. And the reason for that is I'm slowing I, it's an erratic presentation, but I'm slowing that jig down and leaving it in there a little longer. Because, so this is the deal. When I skip it in on that boat dock, maybe that fish is five or six, 10 foot away. And by slowing that jig down, slowing that presentation, but keeping it moving erratically, I'm drawing that fish to it. So if I'm covering a lot of water, I, a lot of times I'll do that. Now, when I'm throwing directly to a target, a lot of times, the only time I do that is right when I come by. Piece of wood, I'm agitating. I'm trying to get that fish, you know, I'm making that bait, that swim jig erratic to get him to come out there. Now, when you're in heavy cover, there, a lot of times there's no reason to do that. You basically can just reel it and bump the cover. Really, the whole key for me on a swim jig is having the right trailer. Now, <clears throat> because we're on the lake in the south where the fish are feeding on a bigger bait, you know, a rage crawl is the number one choice. I'll sometimes go to a menace grub, which is also has two appendages, but it's a smaller profile. And it could be either be a situation where I think the fish are feeding on a smaller bait or I'm around smaller fish and I, I'm taking that big fish equation out of it. Uh, but number one choice for me 95% of the time, a rage crawl. And I basically just match, you know, whatever color swim jig I'm using, I match it with a, a matching rage crawl. And, and honestly, a rage crawl is one of those few trailers that you basically can just throw it out there and reel it in and the trailer will catch the fish for you. You basically don't have to do anything. But again, when I'm around heavy cover, I like to shake that swim jig a little bit because I'm trying to draw that fish out.